These are called Yeka Par seals. The seal on the screen that you see behind me back here. This one comes from the very famous Flinders Petrie, the famous Egyptologist Flinders Petrie. What seals like this one are is on the bottom it will have a, have a seal on it that you can stamp something with. They're used by royalty, kings, and officials of the high court. In this case, there's a scarab beetle, it's Egypt. Now, dozens of these have been found with that particular seal on them. A lot of people don't know this. Coming from this area right here, just outside the staging area where the plagues of the Exodus are recorded to have taken place. This land here would be Goshen, where the Israelites are stated to have lived during the time of the, the Exodus. These seals come from that land right there of Goshen and also over here from Canaan. So you have Abraham, you have Isaac, and then you have Jacob. And Jacob's name would be changed to Israel. Canaan, ancient Canaan, is the modern day Israel in the ancient Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob's name would be changed to Israel. Israel had 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel. One of those sons was Joseph who was carried into bondage over here into Egypt where that step pyramid complex is. The land of Goshen is right here where all of these scarabs are found and also up here in the land of Canaan. These are royal seals right here. Well, Jacob Har, this seal right here, Jacob Har, well, Jacob, that would be Jacob, and Bahar down here on the bottom. Bahar means he chose. This name back here, I am, I am that I am, that's what God told Moses to go tell Pharaoh when they ask, Who is it that hath sent you? Tell them that I am the great I am. I am that I am have sent thee. There is an unusual character in Egyptian history, a very mysterious character, character portrayed in the, in the mummy movies named Imhotep. Now Imhotep is said to have, well he did, he built the, he is credited with building the step pyramid complex, the seven level, seven level, it's got six steps, seven level step pyramid complex. Many believe looks a lot like a grain storage facility. In fact, many, myself included, believe that the Egyptian Imhotep and the Biblical Joseph, seen right here, both credited with starting a golden age of Egypt, may be one in the same. Well, in Joshua 24, verse 32, it reads this, The bones of Joseph, which the Israelites had brought up out of Egypt, were buried in Shechem in the plot of land that Jacob bought for 100 pieces of silver. We are told specifically that the body of Joseph was taken out of Egypt when the Hebrews left during the, during the Exodus. The Avara statue, I think, is more likely a statue, particularly with the red hair of Jacob. There are 12 tombs, and the one in front of that statue was empty. But I can tell you this, that Joseph, well, Joseph would have originally been buried by the step pyramid, the grain storage facilities that he built. And there inside that empty tomb with the mummified Ibis birds,
Now, in 1964, Walter Emery, whose book I have right here, Archaic Egypt, found huge underground galleries containing the mummies of sacred animals, namely ibis birds, mummified ibis birds, dedicated to Imhotep. No inscriptions were found on the walls of the beautiful sarcophagus room, and the sarcophagus was empty. Walter Emery spent his entire life looking for the tomb of Imhotep. My opinion is, he found it. Modern Egyptology, like with many other things, simply doesn't like what he found. More importantly, the mastaba was oriented to the north instead of the east, meaning just like on that signet ring, he had, Imhotep had his mastaba pointed in the other direction away from the pagan Egyptian gods. Joseph saved Egypt from the seven year famine and was an interpreter of dreams. Well, Imhotep, or I am Hotep, saved Egypt from the seven year famine and was also an interpreter of dreams. Joseph was a foreigner from another land, made second to Pharaoh over all of Egypt. Imhotep was also a foreigner from another land, made second only to Pharaoh over all of Egypt. Joseph, well, the body is missing, and Imhotep, where the body should be, all those ibis birds are, his body is missing. Joseph died at 110 years old, according to your Bible. Imhotep, commonly recorded as having died at 110 years old. Oh, but wait, 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 wait. There's one more. The name Imhotep or I am Hotep is comprised commonly of these three symbols. The feather, just like in the wang of the hearts. Heart is on one end, feather on the other end. Your heart must weigh lighter than the feather. Only God can make one's heart lighter than a feather. The wisdom owl, the old wisdom owl, that symbol can either be light or dark, just like most symbols. But look at this right here. This is a table upon which sets your daily bread. The name Imhotep is commonly translated as the one who comes in peace. Not a bad name, a really comforting name. The only thing is this, is that Imhotep is not really a name. It's actually a title encapsulated here on the screen in a cartouche. However, in this common translation, we're, we're missing the God's name, yet it's right in there. Let me show you what I mean. This right here is the cartouche of Tuthmosis the Third. Easy way to remember this. Name of the God, name of the man. Tuth, God's name is Thoth, seen right here. Name of the man is born. Tuthmosis, Thoth is born. Right up here in his cartouche, we see the ibis bird for Tuth or Thoth, name of the man, Moses. I've made it in gold up there. Only, well, the ibis birds, the people of Egypt brought those for Joseph or Imhotep. No matter the case, if we looked at Ramses II, otherwise known as Ramses the Great, name of the god, Ra, name of the man, Messes, born from, born from Ra. There's the symbol for Ra right there. Amenhotep, Amenhotep. Name of the god, Amun or Amun. Hotep, Hotep. Hotep means mouth of or speaks for or is pleased. Well, wait a second. Im Hotep or I am Hotep. Well, Hotep means mouth of or speaks for. And the god's name is I am. The great I am. There is no God. I am in Egypt. Therefore, and last one, Joseph, according to the Torah, the Bible, worshiped yod heh vav -Heh, also known as I am. Imhotep speaks for, and the God's name, I am. And that it was Joseph who they likened to their God of wisdom, not Pharaoh. So when Tuth Moses, name meaning Thoth is born, saw Moses come in and say, the God I am has sent me. I promise you he knew about that tomb and who the Egyptians likened unto their God of wisdom, Thoth. In other words, by the end of the Exodus story, 
This one here, who tried to compare himself to a god of wisdom, even his own name will be taken from him. You are looking at a recreation of the actual Red Sea crossing site, approximately to scale on the screen. That is the Egyptian to Arabian side where the Hebrews crossed. I would like to thank you for watching this presentation. This was just a few short clips from our film Exodus over at the God in a Nutshell project. Actually, this is just the tip of the iceberg of all of the, the elements that are within that film. This is probably one of the, the best films, at least to date, that we've ever made at God in a Nutshell. It goes hand in hand with the, the book Exodus by the God in a Nutshell project, which can also be found on Amazon.com as well as over at God in a Nutshell. I just want to I just want to pray a special blessing. This is the holiday season, the Christmas season, and I just want to pray a blessing over all of you and your families and also invite you if you enjoyed these clips to come over and I'd like to invite you to come over and watch our, our film Exodus. If you enjoyed these short clips, I'd like to to invite you to come over to God in a Nutshell and watch our, our full-length Exodus. It's, it's quite a journey. I think you'll really enjoy that, that ride. I'm Trey Smith, again, of God in a Nutshell. God bless every, every last one of you and your families on the other side of the screen.